This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So in this demo, I want to show you a little bit about creating or configuring and working with service applications. Now keep in mind that there are so many service applications and every service application has additional configuration settings that you will want to explore. What I want to focus on here is more just getting you comfortable and introduced to the interfaces for working with service applications, a few key things that you should keep in mind we're not going to take the time to dive into every service application and look at all the possible properties. We might look at a couple of examples. So let's go ahead and bring up here our central administration website again. So in the central administration, we have application management and we've been building web applications and site collections and now we're looking here at service applications. So let's actually click the heading first just to see that in a little bit more detail. Service applications is its own heading. We can manage them. We can configure associations between web applications and service applications. And then there's a shortcut there to manage services. So let's go ahead and click on manage service applications. Now this takes us to a screen where we see all of the installed service applications. Now I happen to have all of them installed. You may not see all of this information. You may see none or maybe you'll just see a couple of uh, kind of built-in ones. But if you want to, if, if you don't have them all in here already, and one of the reasons you would have them all in here is if you ran the farm configuration wizard, right down here in the lower left, farm configuration wizard would help you quickly set up all of these service applications with default settings. But again, in a production environment, you wouldn't want to do that. In a production environment, you would want to come in here and do them yourself. So if I were to create a new service application, I would come up here and choose new, and then I choose which type of service application I wish to create. So let's say I wanted to create another Excel services application or another search engine. I've already got one search engine, maybe I want to create another one. Or a visiographic service. You can have multiples because they might be configured differently and they might be uh, accessible. You know, one might be accessible to uh, some of your web apps and the other one might be accessible to your other web apps so that each web app is getting slightly different versions of these service apps. So let's say I want to create Excel services application. That would open up into a separate uh, little window and I give it a name call it Excel Services or Excel Services 2 or something like that. Now all applications just like your web applications must be a part of an application pool. So I can choose an existing application pool or I can create a new one. And then when you create new application pools you have to define well what service account, what managed service account do we um, want to associate that with. So the application itself runs with a particular security context. And then we decide, add this service applications proxy to the farm's default proxy list. So remember, uh, proxies are a way of connecting web applications to a service application. And you can have proxy groups. So there's a default proxy group, which is all of them. And then there are other um, proxy groups that would be smaller groupings of service applications that we publish out to other web apps. So let's go ahead and cancel that. Now as you're managing these things, the way that this works is you, you want to select one. So for instance, here is, um, let's choose search as an example. Okay, when I select the row, you'll notice it becomes highlighted in blue. Actually, let me go down, let me choose uh, Excel. So I highlight it in blue. As soon as I highlight it in blue, up here become some buttons that have become active. So if I want to specify some administrators, I want to delegate some administrators to be able to manage that service application, I could name them here. That's how we do 
delegated administration and give them some special permissions. So you could do that for every one of these service applications so they can be managed in slightly different ways. So same thing with managed metadata service. Okay, let's go back to Excel. Um, now some of these will have properties. This one is grayed out. So there'll be common properties. And then sometimes you can click a manage button. If I click the manage button, it's going to take me to another page where I can manage that service application. And then all the settings you see on this page are specific to whichever service application I had selected. Remember, I chose Excel services. So there are global settings. I could come in here and define trusted locations where Excel services is going to um, pull from workbooks and render uh, Excel elements on a browser. You know, trusted data providers. So again, without going into all of these settings, like memory and throttling settings and so on, you can explore these yourself. The main point I'm making is that every one of these service applications has its own little manage button. So another example of that would be managed metadata. When I come up here, uh, this one actually has a properties button that is now active, so I can look at that. But let's click that manage. Manage will take me to a page. Again, a page that is dedicated to managing or configuring that particular service application. Same thing with search. Same thing with business data connectivity and so on. So here, manage metadata. It took me to a page where I can manage some of the settings, the term store administrators, the default language, working languages, imports. And over here, I can manage my terminology for my corporate taxonomy. So again, more detail on that kind of thing later. The point is it's taken us somewhere where we can manage it. The same would be true for search and so on. Now with Manage Metadata, I mentioned that the Properties button is now active. When I click on Properties, what that's doing is it's actually bringing up the properties that were available to me when I first created. And this is an example of one where I can specify a database and authentication into that database. All right, we had some of the settings like an application pool. Okay, so this is where I could come in and I could make changes. Perhaps I want to take a service application I have and I want to move its database to a dedicated database server. I can do that. I have that type of uh, control in here. Okay, now one other thing that I want to show you that's a little bit deceptive. Um, let's go back to Excel. If I'm coming up here, remember I said that you can select the row and it'll highlight as blue which activates the buttons up here and allows me to uh, perform some of these actions. Or when I'm moving around and I'm highlighting things, but then I decide right here I'm going to click this hyperlink, that actually jumps me to the Manage page. When maybe all I really wanted to do was select the row. So you just got to be careful. Don't select the words if you're not intending to go to the Manage page come away from the words over here to select the row so that you can then use some of these buttons up here. Now publish. Service applications can be published in order to be made available to other farms. This is a great way if I've got a large environment where um, I've got two, three, four different farms. I'm talking SharePoint farms but they all might want to say, uh, utilize the exact same search engine. Then what I could do is I could pick a farm that's going to sort of host the search engine. And once I have it, I would publish it. And by publishing, I could configure who the trusted farms are, and they can connect in, and they can use this particular search service instead of creating their own. And we could do that with any one of these. And that's why one of the possible topologies here is to have a dedicated application service farm where we host a lot of these things and all of your business farms will connect in and utilize some of those, uh, some of those elements. So the way that you connect is through these proxies. 
Okay, so you can connect services through these proxy connections. They are representative of the proxy um, connection. In fact, that's why you see double. Your eyes aren't going crazy, you see double on here. For every one of these application services, I have the application itself and its corresponding proxy. It's the connection point. It's the way that we connect to uh, these components. Perhaps across to a trusted farm, I, I need to make a connection to it. Perhaps to another web application or between web applications and so on. So that's a little bit about managing our service applications inside of the central administration console of SharePoint. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.